You're in the mix with Lil Drummer Girl with your host, Dawn Marie. Hello, my drumsters. It's Dawn Marie Mute. Welcome back to another episode of The Little Drummer Girl. I am so freaking excited because it is my 80th episode. And I want to just say thank you guys because if it weren't for you listening, I would not have a show. So thank you for always being there to support it. And I hope you are still enjoying it. And uh, hopefully, it's getting better than it was in the past. I want to thank you again for all your love and support. And today, Tom McNeil, who is uh, with Patreon, and you know, Patreon was something I learned about quite a while ago, and I just found it amazing that you can really crowdsource your ventures and uh, all those great things that you can do to try to make some extra money for your artistic ventures. I am going to share with you one of the segments that we had on the Tampa Jam, It's Time to Pivot Online Summit. And I really hope you enjoy this. Stay tuned for more releases from the summit. I will be sharing those as well. And you can also check out the video version at Tampa Jam vlog at YouTube. Go look it up under my name, Dawn Marie Mutell, M-U-T-E-L-L. Enjoy. Well, today we are going to be graced by Tom McNeil, who is the Creator Partnerships Associate with Patreon. And I'm so excited that he's here with us today because he's a problem solver, a strategic thinker, an arts advocate with a decade of experience, and his career was shaped by working with artists, orchestras, festivals, venues, promoters, and media. And we have so much to cover. So let's have Tom join us now. Tom, thank you so much for being here. I'm so excited because, you know, I've been hearing so many amazing things about Patreon for so many years now. And to have you here to help our jammers get jamming online and help fund their projects, I'm just thrilled. So thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. You have such a diversified background. How did you wind up getting the gig with with Patreon? Great question. And the honest answer is very much to do with drummers. Um, Oh, really? I used to be an artist manager and represented projects by people like Quincy Jones, but also by Stuart Copeland, who I'm sure um, many of your your viewers will have an opinion on (laughs) one way or another. And I actually looked after another drummer composer called Ollie Howell and Amy Winehouse's old drummer, Troy Miller. So um, uh, yes, I, as an artist manager, had seen Patreon as a really interesting platform. And I think that when the opportunity came to to join the team, it was a really intuitive opportunity because of the way that we're all starting to use digital tools in, in a smarter way to be creatively independent, to build community, to build a new part of the, of the revenue stream. So it was part of me just being really curious about how this was all working and also wanting to to bring my music industry background and to see how that could flourish within the team. I love that. I mean, that's that's a nice background you have there. Uh, just so many questions I have about it. Well, for those who are watching and listening, you know, Patreon is a way to fund their projects. So can you tell us a little bit about what they actually offer as a benefit to the uh, user? Yeah, for sure. So I think that the really impressive, magical thing about Patreon is that you're creating a membership proposition and you're saying, here's an opportunity uh, to have a value for value exchange, which means that on an ongoing basis, your fan base are contributing to your work and supporting your creativity and that you're creating things on a monthly basis to give them kind of a sense of benefit and reward from from that relationship. And so in terms of the the question about how are people doing this, first thing to say is that we have over 180,000 creators using Patreon and no two pages are the same. And again, I think this is something that really stands out about Patreon, that, that artists are able to build pages that are authentic to them and to their interests and to the things that their fans love. So I'd say, you know, a key aspect of anybody who's building a Patreon is to think, what do I really like doing? What are the things that my fans like me doing as well? Um, and to build things around that. So um, I'll give you a, a couple of examples um, of different routes. And I've picked, I've picked drummers. Is drummers a good idea? Yes, yeah, to, please. To hang on? Yeah. <laughs> sure. Great. Um, so say, for instance, if you love making how-to videos, if you love showing people your favorite drum fills, if you have like the 
the inclination that your audience want to learn how to play a certain way or a certain style. Doing tutorials is a really great way to engage people. It uses the talent that you have. It uses the interest that your audience has. And Dan Weiss is really nailing educational content on Patreon right now. Um, so say, for instance, uh, as, as an entry level, um, he's doing pre-recorded lessons um, that are kind of requested content from his from his fans who say, hey, we'd really love you to show us this. And he creates um, lessons that basically enhance the community and share skills, which is really cool. One tier up from that, he does a weekly bonus video um, where you can do deep listening sessions with Dan, where he talks about albums that he's listening to. Um, and I think this is kind of another really interesting dimension of what we're seeing work really well on Patreon, that you can do things that basically look to things you've already got in your archive or things that you've already created, but you do like a, a, a listening or watching party where people really love to hear your insight. So, you know, you listen back to an album that you made, but instead of just listening to all of it, you become the liner notes. Talk about wow. how you wrote the piece, you know, like what it was yes. like to make in the studio as opposed to play it on the road. What's it like to tour? Where'd you like to drop that song into the set? So, um, yeah. Dan's, Dan's doing that really well. Um, another route that I'd, I'd recommend people check out if that's more their vibe is what Mark Juliana is doing. So another kind of like powerhouse drumming example, but he is doing really cool blends of both artist access, you know, access to him as a, as a creator, but also sharing parts of a new project. So he's got um, two live Q and A's that happen every month where people can just <laughs> throw their questions at him, yeah. which is, you know, it's kind of like being backstage at the show asking awesome. your favorite questions and then also um every month he's sharing two new recordings from his new cave project which stands for a collection of audiovisual experiments trust me it's come up with a cool name for something um but yeah so you're getting something that's exclusive so you're you're seeing things hearing things from the cave project that nobody else is so um yeah those are those are kind of like two strong examples of the different routes that you can take but the most important thing, as we said at the top, is think about the things that you love doing, think about the things that your fans love, and then really lean into that. Let me ask you, that is getting an account set up, is it very uh, techie? Is it difficult to do? I would say that if anybody has ever set up a social media account before, they can set up a Patreon account. Yes. Um, it's, a, it's got a really great user flow, and, and also our support team is something that we've built, built really carefully. We've got lots of resources that answer the same questions that come up again and again. So when people do run into situations where they think, oh, what I'd really love to do is create like my own podcast. How could I upload audio to Patreon? How would that distribute? Then they can find the podcasting article that we've created to walk people through that. Same for marketing plans same for launch plans. So not only is it a great user experience to set up an account, but we've also anticipated a lot of questions um, that people can, uh, can really dig into. Um, and also for the support team, you're working with a real Patreon employee. You know, we care about one-on-one -on -one interactions and we've, we've put a lot of thought and investment into what's the most creator first platform that we can build. And, and we love to hear the feedback from our creators who, who tell us that it's so supportive. I love that. Is there um, a lot of fees involved when they do start to collect money? So the way that we're set up is to motivate us to, to make as much money with our, with our partners and our artists. It's a percentage-based model. So to offer just kind of like a useful benchmark, Facebook and YouTube have got membership programs and they take between 30 and 40% the revenue wow. that an artist generates. The most that Patreon takes on our plans is 12%. And the majority of artists that, that we work with actually get started on the 8% plan. So um, again, we, it's, a, it's a great when our, when our artists tell us that in comparison to their options, Patreon was a no-brainer <laughs> because <laughs> we were really thinking about how can we make sure that we can keep that percentage in a place that's the most affordable for them. And that also allows us to keep investing in, in our own growth and tool creation. Um, our mission is to get creators paid. You know, that's, that's that. why we're here. <laughs> yes. um, and that's, that's, that's the logic that, that drives a lot of those decisions. I mean, I didn't realize that Facebook took that much. That's kind of highway robbery. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> that's a lot. 12% is actually very fair. So that's, that's really reasonable. And for the majority of people, as I say, you know, on the 8% 
plan, you're still going to get full access to all of the apps and integrations um, that that is on the twelve percent. So um, yeah, it's it's that sort of it's that good. So speaking of integrations, what are some platforms that they can use to integrate uh, so they could promote in different places? It's a great question. So um, the majority of the integration work that our team has done has been part of the process of evolving over six or seven years and realizing that it's great to be able to empower people to use the technology they're already familiar with. So a lot of our integrations are about the delivery of benefits. So to give you an example, when people have video benefits that they want to distribute and they want to do so in a secure manner, they can use our Vimeo integration to make sure that that is securely shared and the link can't be given out to people that are outside of their their patron group. Uh, When people are going to do things like a live stream concert that they can plug in through Crowdcast, which has obviously got some really great interaction and broadcast features, but again, it's like it's housed within, within Patreon. For people who are doing newsletters using the MailChimp integration so that you can capture the, the email addresses of your new patrons and write to them if you want to. And I think that's a kind of, that's a kind of key piece as well that um, people always are, I think, surprised to hear about. But unlike a social media platform where they always hold the, the fan data uh, mm. and they decide who sees what, Every time that you get a patron, you, you capture their email address, so you've got a direct line of communication to them, and and it means that unlike you know a Instagram platform where they decide who sees what, every time that somebody receives a benefit, they get an email in their inbox, they get a notification, and that helps to build that relationship between artist and fan. Oh, that's huge. That's really great because I know sometimes you know linking things together could be really tricky, especially when you're saying something. You want to keep it private. So that's really spectacular. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. It's and great. Uh, so when you mentioned something with the podcast too, are you working with Libsyn or Blueberry? Does it, does it matter? Here? We've got uh, a really healthy uh, user base in the podcast market. And um, the, the way that podcasters typically use their Patreon is that they'll have their normal distribution network whatever it is that they're using, wherever it is that their regular podcast is appearing. And they'll then use Patreon to deliver extra benefits on top of the regular podcast. To give you a couple of examples of those, they might use Patreon to send out bonus episodes. And we've got a really brilliant podcasting tool that our engineers built, which means that you can upload a podcast or audio file to your Patreon page. And that can be heard there, but it also can be sent via a private RSS link into your into your podcast player. So like I, for instance, um, receive um, Hello Somebody, which is um, Senator Nina Turner's podcast. Um, her first guest was Killer Mike, who's also yeah. you know, a, a Patreon favorite. But I get the bonus episode onto my iPhone, um, which is super convenient. Yes. And it's a really great kind of like technology ad, like value ad that, that people can have access to, irrespective of whether they're a podcaster or a musician or a video creator, whatever it might be. Now, let me ask you this question. What about the the folks out there who might have a bit of a problem or being a little bit shy to ask for money from people? I mean, I know like memberships is great and things like that, but I know there's a lot of people out, you know, times are tough and people are struggling. So, you know, how can they change their mindset or so just to realize like this is really a big opportunity for them to be making some extra money for themselves to help their craft along. Definitely. Um, I think it's a really important conversation topic, Um, not least because there is so much that 2020 has brought to us that we weren't expecting. And I think that artists who are already creatively sensitive people are really kind of hearing what their communities are saying and really kind of taking the temperature of the room. So, you know, I think it's it's a smart thing to anticipate. There are two initial elements that I'd really think about as an, as an artist. The first one is that by creating a membership, what you're doing is giving your fans the opportunity to become a patron, to go from being like one of the people who buys all your records, comes to all your shows, engages with your social media, to take it to, to a next level and then doing so to support your creative independence. And that's not asking for money. That's giving somebody the opportunity to come and be part of something. And, you know, before I worked at Patreon, I was a patron of a couple of musicians who I loved and who I just, they created the opportunity for me to 
be part, a closer part of their world. And, and I just felt that it was, it was an unmissable opportunity. You know, it was, um, yeah. it was a really, it was a no brainer because I think sometimes we forget to think of ourselves as music fans, you know? So I think it's, when you think about the artists that you love, it's, it's really, um, compelling, I think, to think about how you feel about when they create new opportunities for you to experience their art. You know, it's, it's usually a feeling of gratitude. At least that's what I experience. Okay. Um, um, and the, uh, the second thing that I'd say is worth considering is actually asking your fans. So I've worked with various um, artists where step one has been saying to their fans via their social media, hey, I'm thinking about starting a membership Patreon scenario I put some creative thought into the things that we could do. Who'd be down for that? And, you know, it's a great way to introduce the idea to your fans. You get a really good sense of what it is that they're excited about, and it can help you shape that. Um, and the third thing that I'd say is, you know, artists are creating community and connection on Patreon. Um, people want to be active participants in that process. And especially in a moment like this, where we're not able to go to the live shows that we would usually go to or hang out in the bars that we'd usually hang out in. A Patreon's kind of an awesome place that I've seen repeatedly for artists and fans become a new place of community and connection, which uh, is definitely something that people really need right now with the, with the shortage of those experiences in the, in the real world. Absolutely. And you mentioned the live stream earlier. Is there another platform that you guys are working closely with with regards to live streams? So, so many opportunities for, for live streaming right now. You know, I think basically 2020, we're going to have like the best video record of what people were thinking. It's just, <laughs> just like brought to you by live stream. Um, so again, it goes back to that question that you asked about integration. It's really easy to do a live stream uh, on YouTube and integrate it with your, with your um, Patreon. It's a really easy thing to do via Crowdcast, share a link via Zoom. Um, and people who are more comfortable on platforms like Instagram, where they just know that their fans are there, they create, you know, patron only Instagram groups so that they can go live wherever they are and people can tune into that. Um, so they can to, do that? Yeah. So to use an example, um, oh. I worked with Katie Tunstall um, on her launch um, and her fans are really you know, they, they just love using Instagram for their connection. So what she did was to create a patron only Instagram group. And then as people join her, um, her Patreon, they get directed to that new group and she knows who to yeah. let in because she's, because she's got the list of names and email addresses. She can see everybody that, that should be there. So it's very cool. Yeah. It's very flexible. And I think this is yeah. why it suits artists so much and creators because it's a very creative space. So, you know, if you've got that inclination, it's a kind of a home from home. I feel like I first learned about you guys about maybe five years ago. And um, I just was like, this is awesome. Because, you know, so many years back, you really didn't have any place to, to do something like this. And this is mm -hmm. really crucial, especially if you're an independent artist and you don't have a label backing you. And it's a great place and a great way to just find different avenues to promote yourself and to try to make some money at the same time. Totally, Don Marie. That one of the things that you've clearly observed from an early stage is one of the benefits of having a founder who lives in the space of the, the people that we serve. You know, Jack Conte created Patreon because he was making music and he was a YouTuber and he saw that there wasn't the, the opportunity to form the sorts of community and dependable revenue streams that were going to allow for his immediate career to flourish in the way that it has. And so by creating things that were built in the image of what he needed, naturally we've got something that is creator first and creative because he's lived it. And I think that that's a, that's a really crucial, crucial part of what makes Patreon special. Definitely, definitely, definitely. <laughs> and there's nothing like somebody who's been in the trenches to know what to, to give yeah. the best out to, to others. Thank you so much. Oh, our time is just flying by here. How can uh, our folks stay in touch with you and learn more about you and hang out For with sure. you? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> enjoy my Patreon. No, I don't. I don't have a <laughs> um, So um, I'm part of the Creator Partnerships team at, at Patreon, and um, we are one of the creator facing parts of the business. Um, my uh, contact details can be shared after, um, after this session. And 
um, yeah, we are, we're more than happy to, to field anybody's inquiries that, that's thinking about setting up their Patreon. And yeah, we're happy to hear what you're planning and make some recommendations to make sure that you're really set up for success. Awesome. Thank you so much, Tom. I really appreciate everything and all of your pearls of wisdom. And I hope these guys out there take advantage of their services because you know what? You don't know it until you try it, right? So you got to give it a try. But totally. thank you, Tom. I appreciate it. I hope you and your family stay safe. It's been a pleasure. And um, yeah, keep doing what you're doing. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed that presentation and that you sign up for a Patreon account so that you can really reap the benefit. Thank you again for listening. And I really appreciate all the love. If you like this episode, subscribe, tell your friends so that you don't miss out on any future episodes that we drop. All right. Remember, it's never too late to live the life of your dreams and leave a trailblazing behind you. So rock on and rock out and I'll catch you on the flip side.